lecture we will be going through a step by step procedure of deriving the governing equation for the physical system now in this case we will be having a mechanical physical system but it might be a chemical it might be an electrical it might be electro mechanical so there might be different kind of physical system but in this case we will be dealing with a mechanical simple mechanical physical system where we are having a mass that is attached to a spring and a damper the force is applied as an input from the top which is a function of time and we are getting the displacement as a result which is x of t in this case so we will be trying to follow the step by step procedure we to drive the governing equation for the physical system and, and finally we will also be trying to use the Laplace transformation and Laplace inverse transformation that we discussed in the previous lecture which was lecture 4 and lecture 5 and we will be using those techniques to solve our equation and get the final result uh, which will be the output uh, in, in the time domain. Our first step would be to draw the free body diagram of this physical system. Now, the method for the free diagram is quite simple. We just need to take the quantities that we are having and then show all the forces that are applied on that mass. So, the first two forces, the input force from the top, and there are the other two forces then now here we need to think that what should be the direction of these forces when the input is applied so when the input input force is applied the spring force will be in upward direction that will be trying to resist the motion of the mass and same will be the case with the damper force which will be trying to resist the motion of the mass so both of them will be in upward direction let's represent the spring force as fk and the damping force is Fc. This will be our free body diagram for this physical system. In this case, it is a single degree of freedom that its motion is resisted in just one direction or one axis, but there might be second degree or third degree of uh, freedom. Let's move to our second step. Once we are done with the first step that we draw the free body diagram for our physical system, our second step would be to apply a physical law regarding the system that we are dealing with now if it is a thermal system then we will be using physical law related to the thermal system it is electrical then we will be dealing with the physical law of the electrical system now we are having a mechanical system where there is a mass and force is applied on it so we will be using simple physical law for the mechanical system which is the neutral law which states that the summation of force is applied on a mass will be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration produced in that mass this is simple physical law that we will be applying on this free body diagram now as you can see that we have a displacement in this direction right this is a function of time obviously so the forces that are applied in the direction of displacement will be taken as positive while the forces that are opposite to the direction of displacement will be taken as negative and let's try to do that Now actually this is our governing equation for this system but we have to convert this uh, equation into our standard form. Uh, by the standard form we mean that uh, we have to mention all these forces in the terms of the force applied in the input and the output which is a function of time so let's mention it in that. So we have to uh, separate the input, apply the input uh, and that means we have to take these two terms on the other side then we can mention uh, these two forces in terms of displacement producing them so that would be and the acceleration can also be written in terms of the displacement as the second derivative of the displacement so we can write it as x double bar of time t and then this spring force which is fk will be equal to k times x or k times the displacement so we can write fk as k into x of t plus the damping force which is 
actually uh, damping constant into velocity so we can write it as damping constant into velocity is x dot of t now we have converted this equation into its standard form and if to be more clear we can write it as this and this is our final Gowon equation in the standard form for this physical system and once we have our differential equation which is the actual mathematical model of this physical system or you can call it the Gowon equation of this physical system then we need to solve it for the output which is the displacement in the time domain and in order to do that as it is a differential equation so we will take the Laplace transform of this equation on both sides and use the Laplace transformation technique which we discussed in lecture number 4 you can go down in the link in the description if you don't know how to do that or the, I'll provide the link in the top right corner as well so we would be taking Laplace transform on both sides of this equation Let's take the Laplace transform of this equation. So for this term, the Laplace transform would be mass into s square x of s. Now this is our frequency variable uh, x of s. It means it is in the frequency domain. Uh, these two x of zero and x dot of zero or our initial conditions means uh, it is uh, at the time t when t is equal to zero means when we started our analysis what was the displacement and when we started our analysis what was the velocity at that time so if, if they are not given you can just take them as zero but if they are given you must mention it over here the Laplace transform for this function would be Finally, we have k and then x of t would become x of s. And this would be equal to our uh, the force in the time domain would convert to f of s. So, this is the equation that we get while when we take the plus transform of this equation. Then you can multiply mass and you can also multiply the damping constant inside the equation. And this will be our final equation once we take the Laplace transform and uh, try to reduce it. Now, the, our purpose for conversion is that we need to find out the output of this equation. Now, for this equation, our output will be our x of s, which is right here, here, and this term. Now, let's separate the terms uh, with the with the output, which is x of s. So we will get x of s common form then and we will be left with ms square and uh, alternatively we can write this equation You can write this uh, equation by taking the these terms on the other side, and then you would divide this term right here on the, on both of them separately. And then our final output, which is x of s, would be equal to. Uh, 
also uh, taking that on another side it will mean it make it make it plus so we can state this response or the output as um, x1 of s plus x2 of s so we are x1 of s is uh, we call this one as x1 of s and we let this one uh, to be x2 of s which means that the, the overall response is the summation of two responses so this response is due to the input force applied on the mass while the other response is due to the initial conditions which is x of 0 x dot of 0 and x of 0 so it is due to the initial conditions means what what was the initial velocity and initial displacement of the the system before when we started the, our analysis when we, the time for our analysis was zero so that's why we take t as zero now if uh, all the initial conditions were zero or they are not given then we can take them as zero over uh, any solution so once these initial conditions are zero then we will not be having this response at all and our overall response would be due to the input force so this would be our final equation for our response in the frequency domain now as you can see both of the inputs the input uh, due to the force and the input due to the initial conditions is multiplied by a term that is 1 divided by ms square plus cs plus k and this term is known as a transfer function now why is it called transfer function it is called transfer function because it transfers the input into our output and that's why we call it a transfer function plus it includes all the system dynamics uh, that uh, explains the overall behavior of the system and that's why we call it the transfer function in the next step we would be trying to draw a block diagram for this output now the block diagram would be drawn while looking at the number of outputs so we would be having two outputs in this case each one would be depending on the same transfer function which means that the input due to the applied force and the input due to the initial conditions would be converted into two different outputs the first one is our x1 of us while the second output is x2 of us right? and finally we will be having our final output which is x of s right so this is the block diagram for that uh, physical system we just saw we are, both of these inputs the input due to force and input due to in initial conditions are transferred to our two outputs and they are then combined and provide us with the uh, combined output of both of these inputs the term that transfer the input to the output uh, is known as the transfer function as we just discussed now our final step would be to convert this output which is in the frequency domain into the output in the time domain is x of t that's what we need so for that we have again to take the Laplace inverse of this whole function and if you don't know how to take the Laplace inverse I will provide the link in the description and you can also look at the top right corner for the video which explains all the possible cases for the Laplace inverse so you take Laplace inverse on both sides and this would be converting this frequency domain function into our time domain and we would be having our output as x of t and that would be our final function or output in the time domain for example if we have um, an output of x of t in time, time domain as x of t uh, equal to 2 exponent power 1 negative 3 t cos of t plus 2 then we can plot this output we can 
find the output or response at any instant of time and uh, this would be our final solution for the equation of the, the system. That concludes our overall procedure for um, finding out the Roman equation for the physical system and trying to solve it uh, to get our final output as in the time domain. If you liked my video, please hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I would really appreciate the support. Wishing you the best of luck.